Bradford, since in the last video you said that you never get to intro videos, would you like to intro this one? You still talk first. It's the whole purpose. Hey, <laughs> welcome to Worship Tutorials. I'm Bradford. I'm Brian. Hello. We put this amp. This is a Dream Weaver from Third Power. It's a very so good. cool amp. Very, and we're going to get into it. But we mm -hmm. put it in the Helix. Yeah, and now you can have it in your Helix because there's a patch. Links below. <laughs> Power Dreamweaver. This amp kills. If you don't know about third power stuff, it's awesome. Check it out. You've got an American side, you got a British side. The American side has a switch. It does. Tweed or blonde? That's two. 59 Tweed Deluxe, 63 Blonde Basement. We've made some content with this amp already, and as we've mentioned, that amp right there, the which you may or may not be able to see. Same circuit. Same circuit. So yeah. that's two amps so far. The British side, vintage Plexi. I'm not exactly sure which because there's a lot of plexi variation you can go for. And then you hit this orange glow button and it's like a hot rotted plexi. Uh, and then you can jumper the amps channels as we have and you can get any combination of those. Our favorite combination that we found, the blonde with the plexi, not hot rotted. It not sounds hard. nice. And that's what we put in this patch. So that's what we've built in the Helix. Essentially. The way that we did that is this combo, it has a Celestian Gold, Alnico Gold speaker in it, and it has a pretty unique design from Third Power on their cabinets. It's kind of a ported type of a design. So we created impulse responses, which you can get an impulse response pack of this. Link for that of below. Celestian Gold. A lot of links, I'm gonna have to watch this video to make sure I get them all in there. It's like 12 links. <laughs> so the impulse responses from this exact amp are in the Helix, and what we've done for the Helix is we took the basement, the Tweed basement, slightly different than the Blonde basement, but they're similar, the Tweed basement and the bright channel of the Plexi. We combined them together. We, we did call, weave things together. We call it the Plex Man. Plex, Plex Man. in a basement. Uh, DW stands for Dream Weaver. I believe you can. Something, through the night. Night. Right, Nick? I don't know. <laughs> right now what we want to do is show you just how close this patch sounds to this amp. To do that, what we've got is the amp is running out into a two notes uh, captor X. The two notes captor has loaded the exact IRs from this amp and that are in this helix. So we've sort of evened the playing field, but it's still this as amp. As much as possible. Yeah, it's still this amp. So Bradford, I'm going to give this to you. And then our lovely assistant. Bradford is the playing sample guy. And then Nick is our lovely assistant. Nick, the lovely assistant at the uh, the desk, is going to switch inputs. So what we do is we can run this guitar into whatever input we want. So you are going to hear the Helix. Helix first, Nick. Helix is first. And then we'll switch it, and you'll hear the amp. We'll just play you a few chords so you see exactly how close 
they sound together. Helix. Switches to the amp, Nick. Back to the helix. Back to the amp. You get the idea. We're done. I'll say this. If you played one, waited 60 seconds, and played the other. You could wait even less than that. Could you yeah. tell the difference? Maybe if you really knew this amp and really knew this patch, probably not would be my guess. Um, to replicate the different sounds, all we had on in the Helix patch was this plate verb. I guess there was a compressor on in the front too, uh, but that doesn't affect tone too much. And there's also a reverb in the captor to get the reverb on the amp signal, so we kind of dialed them in to sound the same reverb wise. But it sounds really, really close. Yeah, we're not, we're not, making a statement that says they're the exact same yeah, thing and, and you can't test, tell. You'd never be able to write. It's more of a, I mean, this is pretty cool, right? Like it's one of those things. It's pretty <laughs> it is cool, pretty right? cool. Pretty yeah. cool, right? <laughs> it also just goes to show you um, just how much the speaker in the cabinet impact the overall tone from an amp. Yeah. Uh, because these IRs really gave us the vibe and the, the character of this amp yeah. in this Helix patch, even though these amps are not exactly the same circuits that are in here. No. Um, but it's really close. this amp in here, right? Party trick number two. If that's not enough. Is that Bradford and I believe that we are close to just cracking the code of wet effects in front of the amp. The nut. The yes. Cracking the nut, if you will. <laughs> it makes things sound very different. And most of the recorded tones that you hear for, like on albums like Bethel, Hillsong, all that, you're hearing people like David, our friend David Hislop, for example. Where's the mm -hmm. bell, uh, horn. I feel like we can say that. Are running, yeah, are running a pedal board into amps. So you're yeah. hearing wet effects. They're running amps. stereo into two different yeah. amps. So Bradford's gonna walk us through this preset, this patch, what you get, uh, and some of the different tones available yes. on it. I, this is, the more we work on putting effects in front of the amps, yes. the more familiar the Helix is to me. Because that's your That's my preference. That's I your love rate. that. Our normal layout. We got drives, we got some modulation. Drives. Mods. We got some verbs. verbs. We got some delays. Some delays. And we have snapshots. We have snapshots, as always. What we did a little differently, we ran out of DSP. The When you put dual amps, yeah. dual notice, IRs. Notice this bottom row doesn't yes. have much in it. Yes. Just amps and a plate reverb. So we couldn't get a drive in. So we were, there we had a couple options and one of which was EQ. EQ is a trick that you'll see if you watch any of the videos from Premiere Guitar, their rig rundowns, mm -hmm. and they talk to a lot of these studio guys who 
do studio sessions. They have massive boards. It's pretty common for them to have some sort of like EQ pedal. Usually on their it's board. the Boss EQ. It is. The G GE7, I mm -hmm. think is what it is. Very common very, and very interesting. They're typically modded because it's whatever, but. Line six, put the Boss GE7 whatever EQ in this Helix. Mm, there's something there. Yeah. But all we really did was kind of, it's like a Tube Screamer is known for the fact that it pushes mids dump some low end, mm -hmm. and that helps stuff just go whoop, and come right out of the mix. So we kind of replicated that. With the Cali. With, yeah. the, with the Cali EQ, minus the fact that we didn't have a gain control, but. Well, there's level. But there's level, yeah, yeah. it is different, because on a tube screamer, sure. you got level and gain. Yeah. So as it interacts with the drives, mm -hmm. it's not necessarily gonna give you like a massive amount of gain, which you could do if you desire. You could up the level if you'd like, but it definitely saturates things more which is why I'm camping out on it, because yeah. it's very unique, it's different than how we normally do things. Shall we hear it? Let's do that. Let's go through some game stage. First is clean with a little bit of delay. Turn them all on, you got real big, kind of a little yeah. big sound. And and like I said, on its own, you're definitely mm -hmm. gonna hear it and feel it. it does kind of interact like a drive yeah. would. Stacking with stuff, it really adds to like saturation and helps a lead mm -hmm. kind of just feel like because that's what you typically want. People yeah. like when they go for a lead, they're like, I want to feel it, I want it to like sustain, and so that helps and adds to that. Yeah. Other than that, it's kind it, of our typical stuff. It is. Yeah. Everything else, you know, we always change up some modulation, delays and stuff, or typically, you know, everything's gonna get you what you're used to getting. Yeah, you want to go big hall reverb. Of course, the delicious dynamic hall. <laughs> About these the, the wet effects is we really had to dial them in differently yep. being in front of the amp because it changes their gain them. structure essentially. Mm -hmm. So again, links below for you to download this for your Line 6 Helix or your HX Stomp. If you happen to be a Kemper user, we're gonna have Kemper profiles of this as well. You can get the IR pack that we made from the speaker and this cabinet as well. Um, and you can play with that in your Iridium, you in could. your ACS1, ACS1, in any other device that accepts an impulse response file you can use that uh we really uh, this is fun for us to, to kind of create new things in the helix with impulse responses and it's really cool to have the actual amp just to a b and listen like that really does sound pretty close pretty close and now you can have it in your helix kind of a, a way to hack new models into the helix hey subscribe to the channel so we got more helix stuff hx stomp Podgo, I can, by the way, uh, sorry, this is not, unfortunately, we can't do this thing for Podgo because it only can run one amp. You can get the IRs. The IR pack will work with the Podgo, so you can grab that. IRs are just a WAV file, so yeah. easy to do. Yeah. yeah, and if you don't want to buy the full IR pack, just buy the Helix patch and you get the two that we've used. It's a Royer 121. Hacking, baby. And an SR, an Earthworks SR25. That's sort of our go-to favorite mic combo. It is. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. See you in the next one.